Welcome to another episode of Dice to Removal. I'm the professor from Tellarian Community College. Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, should I buy the Return to Kamigawa Tiny Leaders Legendary Challenger event deck? N no. Hello boys and girls and everyone in betwixt. My name is Vince, otherwise known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet, or as many Magic the Gathering players think of me, the poor man Saffron Olive. But not as poor as post-Brexit England. Which brings us to the deck that I'll be discussing today, Death and Taxes. It's a list that I think is jolly good. Meanwhile, I'll be playing with Islands, which means I could be playing some good magic cards, but instead, I'm casting Lord of Atlantis. Well, and if you're wondering why I'm not on Commander Clash anymore, you're the first. Literally no one has noticed- And meanwhile, my I'm gonna be interrupting you all the time, because I love the sound of my own voice. Because I'm American. I swear and use profanity, which is something an edgy 12-year-old does. It compensates for a lack of any substance. A plus. Oh, come on, man. That's not fair. Well, you mentioned the profanity thing. I was taking the piss. Well, I don't even know what that means. And your accent is worse than David Tennant's. You take that back! Hello, and welcome to another episode of Dies to Removal, the Magic the Gathering podcast, where Pleasant Kenobi and myself discuss all things Magic the Gathering. How are you doing today, Pleasant? I've got a YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash Pleasant Kenobi. I thought I'd just say it immediately to stop you from making some <laughs> stupid joke later in the episode of, you've got a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. Go over there and sub right now. But aside from that, Brian, I'm very good. How Should are you, Should I actually sir? watch the videos or just sub and then never come? Because that's what I've done so far. <laughs> sub, and then I have yet <laughs> to watch That can be one of our video. topics yeah. there is the sub count more important than the view count. But no, please do watch the videos. Watch them all the way through. Like them, comment, subscribe, ring that bell. Smash that bell icon. Anyway, I'm great, Brian. How are you today? Uh, I'm, I'm very, very well. I'm excited because we are going to be talking about hot topics in Magic the Gathering. Things that push people's buttons. Things that push people's buttons. We are not talking about controversies, like, oh, there was this scandal. We are going to talk about controversial. You know, YouTube shills, like shilling to wizards. Shills. None of that stuff. We're not going in on Brian's, you know, lurid career with many a controversy around wizards. and. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Of course not, of course but not. So we're yes, talking about yes. hot button topics. So for, for example, there was a controversy sometime back where a uh, sheet of uncut magic cards from an upcoming set had been smuggled out of the printer, photos taken of uh, Ixalan and uploaded. And I'm, we're not going to talk about that instance, but we will talk about the hot topic of when there are leaks should the community be allowed to discuss them freely? Content creators make content on it. What is 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 the idea with leaks? But first, we thought we'd warm up before we get into the uh, uh, controversial hot Juicy topics. One. We're gonna just talk about some gameplay hot topics. We recently saw the return of protection to yes. Magic the Gathering with Corset 2020. Mark Rosewater said, protection is gone and now it's back. I think people need to be aware of this as well, that Mark Rosewater said a lot of things that at the time he said them were completely correct and completely true. Yeah. And obviously the design philosophy changed over time, right? So protection was gone, wasn't it? Completely gone. No more right. Moon Crusaders. Yeah. Suddenly you've got Uncommons and then tw yeah. M20, sorry, that protection from colors. I mean, listen, you know I love Mark Rosewater. You know, he is the, the daddy of magic these days. He is, and he's a lovely, I've met him several times now. He's a lovely, wonderful person, but he's a bit of a, 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 a controversial hot topic in himself for in terms of all the stuff he says on his blog. Because sure. because if you follow uh, Mark Rosewater's blog, Rosewater's blog he makes like about eight, I believe the correct number is eight million blog entries per second. And occasionally when you put out that many, there are some contradictions or uh, some things that you go but back times on. times change, right? controversies. Like, I had comments on my latest video saying, but Vince, you said X on an episode of this show. <laughs> and I was like, well, my opinion has changed. I've right. now played with the cards and my opinion has changed. So opinions change and philosophy at companies changes. So protection back because it's cool. Well, also, Mark Rosewater is a little like the doctor, uh, and rule one, the doctor, Which doctor lies. Doctor? You didn't say it right. You should have said Doctor Who. I was hoping you would. No, no, me. No, no, I'm the Doctor Who. He's no, British and he doesn't watch Doctor Who. I would say, Who. like, which Doctor? He says Doctor Who, and I go, who? And then we have, like, a long bit. Right. 
Yeah. You can tell, I these, get, you can I tell get, these are rehearsed. I get, I get crap. <laughs> I get crap for having never watched Star Wars. What crap does Vince get for being a British man who doesn't watch or enjoy so Doctor you're, Who? So you're telling me people should give me crap for having taste. So, protection has returned to Magic the Gathering. Uh, 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 this is something people are currently debating a bit, and this is just a nice little warm-up. What do you think of protection as a mechanic? I think when it's used sparingly and on the, a few occasional cards, I think it's good. I think it gives good counterplay to strategies that might dominate standard. For example, some of these red decks had cards banned from them in standards. Might have been yeah. a lot better if we had cards that hated on red. So I'm a fan of it for the most part. However, I do remember Lifebane Zombie, which was like... It just it, it just ruins standard for a lot of people because green white decks were unplayable because this card was too powerful. So like sometimes right. it's too good. Right. But on the whole, I'm quite a fan. Well, I like what I like about protection from color is that it's not going to have the same effect against every deck. So, for example, if you've got and, and I understand that that was a problem where it made green white unplayable, but let's say I've got uh, indestructible instead, or I've got Hexproof instead. We're going to mention Hexproof in a minute. But I've got that ability that means no matter what deck I go up against, it, this, this creature is indestructible in every situation. I like the idea of if you're up against blue, blue can't touch you, but if you're up against red, white or red... So in some ways it's inherently balanced. It's, 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 it makes it so that the game is a lot more fun, I yeah. feel. Yeah, Hexproof and Indestructible kind of... Uh, like in the gate, entire segments of the game for every deck possible. It's right? a but blanket. Like, it's a blanket yeah. exception. Although some, I, mean, I saw people complaining about the new protection coming back for the new set. But like, mm -hmm. how different is that to not being able to play any X ones in the format because of Chain Whirler, for example? Right. That's just as bad as having a creature that says you can't target it with your green. Uh, fight spells and right stuff. Or, or or again i'd use the example of like indestructible where it's like so you can't destroy it so it uh, i've got a 3-3 you've got a 10-10 and i can block your 10-10 and not lose my 3-3 you can't lightning bolt my 3-3 whatever and it's like okay but how is that that's better than just protection from white well, maybe I'm up against white and that changes the strategy and that's actually a nice way. I mean, listen, I'm a known merfolk player in modern and merfolk have island walk and I wanna talk about land walk in a sec, but uh, well, actually that's a good transition to it, land walk. Uh, I've got island walk in my merfolk in modern. Land walk is something that has been taken away and said this is not well, fun, Well, merfolk abuses it, right? And merfolk gives the opponent islands via spreading It does, seats. but sometimes you sit down to that game and your opponent is on islands and you're just like, but is that fair though? Is that fair? Against blue? I mean, in the grand scheme of modern, I guess blue? anything's fair, right? But You know what blue rhymes with? F you. Oh, with I thought blue. it was you. Like, do you not think we're being old men about this though, where we're like, oh, I remember back when Landwalk was a thing. I remember when it White was Knight. Not, and... Landwalk was a thing just a few years ago. It yeah, I know, but I mean, like, like, the reason, uh, we, this is something we just mentioned briefly before through the cameras on, like, protection right. harkens back to, like, White Knight and Black Knight and things, sure. right? Like, sure. old school magic. Right. Are we just being like, I want my magic to be old school and. Yeah. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Greatest game in the world. Uh, yeah, it was a Okay, so what's wrong with then? Tell my... me what's wrong with Island, with Landwalk. Why did they say we're going to stop? What, what, why? Why? I, I can't what's even, the problem what was with their, Landwalk? What was their rhyme and reason for getting rid of it? I can't even remember. Uh, I believe, like many things, their rhyme and reason is that it's not fun. fun it's non interactable. Not yeah. So if it's I have mountains. Bad. It's a feel bad. If I have mountains and you have all goblins uh, have Mountain Walk, then, well, I can't do anything, can I? Oh yeah, you just kill me with removal spells. <laughs> right. Like, but as long as it's not like protection from red and mountain walk on the same card. Like that would be. Here's why I think that land walk argument is 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 a bit ridiculous though, because we still make cards that say can't be blocked. Yeah. And a lot as well. There's a lot uh, of them showing up. So I would actually say mountain walk is better and more interactable than can't be blocked because maybe I don't have mountains or maybe I will, ch if I'm in multicolor, I will choose not to play my mountain and, and, and wait for a different red yeah, source. Yeah, or your red sources are like on non-mountain lands, exactly, right. yeah. I don't think there's any, in person, I don't think there's any issue with mountain walk. I like my magic quite complex. I like my magic to have different facets and different things you can do with it. So the more keywords, the better. But I do understand as well, from a new player perspective, the reason they try to simplify all the yeah, other green mechanics. Sad. Mm? You feel sad. They're not just that, but they don't Whoa. want e every set to have like a million and one keywords. Oh, I personally oh, do. Yeah. Modern Horizons having like a thousand different mechanics in it gets me excited. But I get from a newer player perspective, it's not the best experience of like what's mountain walk, what's protection, what's destruction, what's flying, and all these 
all these things come up. So they simplified the evergreen mechanics right down. To well, I don't think it's it's so much that it's it's simplified. I feel that it's just feel bad, bad feel bad. Oh no, it is. That yeah. definitely factors into yeah, it. But yeah, also, I don't think like land walks that complicated, is it? No, I don't think it is. But they've definitely yeah. just they've just gone and got the keyword book and they've added prowess over the years, haven't they? Right. Is, is skulk? I would say prowess and skulk. They wanted they They're wanted skulk to be. They, they said they really liked skulk and then they they didn't, didn't really use it. use it. Yeah. So that's apparently on the evergreen book. Maybe they took that off for now. But I, I mean, banding was evergreen. Yeah, but that's my point. They, they always tr they, they try to reduce down the number of uh, words for new starters, right? They show mm -hmm. up in the new starter packs and things. What are some other other ones? Hexproof. So hexproof, the, the whole uh, debate with hexproof is... So are you a hexproof man or a shroud man? I prefer to play with hexproof, but intellectually, in terms of <laughs> other people playing the game, like if I was, if I retired from just being a casual magic player, and I'm like, but I then also simultaneously was was put on play design. Well, You'd that would be, be a huge mistake. This is like, how does magic actually? Will go you out be of campaigning business? for shroud? Walk around. The I would. I would say shrouds. Up. Shrouds better because it has a price. Yeah. So the price is, is you can't target your own creature with like. So I can't put an enchantment on my shroud creature. So again, it balances I can't itself. Pump it. It balances itself. It it's safe from you, but it's it can't be hit by me either. I rather like that. Now, when I play, like for example, my Sliver's Commander, and I sometimes at a at the wrong time drop my uh, Sliver that gives all Slivers Shroud, and then I want to like pump up a Sliver or something, then I'm like, oh, screw Shroud, it should be hexproof. Yeah, so that's a greedy thing. I, I like, play so much magic, sometimes I get the difference. So I'll, I'll stick my Greaves on a creature in Commander, yeah. and I'll go to Target, and like, you can't, you've given your own creature Shroud. I'm like, huh. Yeah, there is a cost here. Right. My, my lightning greaves aren't even free because they've got a cost because they give shrouds. Hexproof's hex easy. It's easy mode. It's 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 it's. I've got all the protection. So you think? Do you think Boggles is an easy mode deck? Well, there's no such deck as Boggles. It's Bogles. Is that uh, like so when you said that Oof Bogles? was pronounced Oofy? Well, that was just but ah. So Vince, I was incorrect, and I'm able to admit that. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you think Bogle, Bogles? Bo Bogles. So you think Ooh, Bogles? Look what we got. Doctor Who and Bogles. Do you think Bogles is an easy mode deck? Uh, Bogles is a fun deck. It's yes, it is because you you're you're piling on. I mean, can't Hexproof and Shroud both coexist? They both have their advantages. It's a pain yeah. in the ass, though, Bogles but, but isn't I think, it? Yeah, it, That's why I love it. So it's a pain in the ass. Deck. So a two mana one one with Hexproof. And they should just pile it on. But they should have more. So, so it would be two mana, right? A 1-1 one, one with Shroud would be what? You know what I mean? they should, what they, are you going to do with a 1-1 one, one They should make Hexproof creatures cost more mana and balance them out that way. Is that what you're saying? Maybe. Do you think they put Hexproof on the creatures that are too low mana cost? Glade Cover Scouts and Bogles and Invisible Stalkers. Do you think they're all mistakes in design? I don't know about a mistake in design, but I, well, like for example, I know Blighted Agent with 1-1 one, one unblockable in fact. Yes. I mean, now especially with scale up and modern. Ooh. But at least it's got Hexproof. Can you imagine if we do another set of the infect, they'd be a Hexproof infect creature. Can you imagine how bad that Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but like, so is Hexproof on low mana well, we have Hexproof, is that mistake? Yeah. Uh, I don't know that I'd say it's a mistake. I, 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 when I look at the controversy of Hexproof versus Shroud, I'm on Team Shroud uh, uh, in in intellect, but on Team Hexproof in heart. Okay, okay. I think I, they can both coexist. I think that... Oh, so do I. So do I. I just think... I don't think Shroud should be... They, they, is, they don't do Shroud anymore. Yeah, Shroud's gone. Shroud's gone because it's it's it's, it's Rest problematic. Rest in peace, Inkwell, Leviathan, never right. get reprinted. I would like Shroud to be used... And I think you have a very good idea. Hexproof is more expensive, perhaps. We can make more cost-effective creatures with Shroud, and then we can make better creatures with Hexproof. But instead, we get Geist of St. Well, it's been a while, but Geist of St. Traft and Traft. things, Hexproof on them? Like, Geist of St. Traft should have been Shroud, not Hexproof. Yeah, I think that'd be way more fair, but that's not yeah. how they did it. So, we're not going to do too many, like, individual cards, because no, we'll no, be no, here all day, cards, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's one card that kind of has Hexproof and Shroud in a weird... Roundabout, well, no, it's got hexproof, but like super hexproof. Right. And it's a merfolk. <laughs> and it's a commander printed yeah. cart. Right. True Name Nemesis. Is this really a, a controversy? Who is in favor of True Name Nemesis? I am Mr. Merfolk. I am a merfolk player, and I hate True Name Nemesis. Yeah, it's so, a, Okay, so that's not a controversy then. Everyone believes that True Name Nemesis is a It was a huge, well, it, it made for commander cards. I mean, like, it, it's a huge mistake for design space. Well, I guess in some ways then. So, like, you know, I said how sometimes hexproof goes on creatures with too low SEMC. Right. right? That's because in their native environments, maybe not Invisible Stalker, because in that draft environment you can stick a sword or a, a butcher's cleaver on them and just kill your opponent, it's dreadful. Right. But they perhaps test them within standard in their own limited environment and a, a bogle 
or a Glade cover scale or an invisible stalker is okay, right? right. And Trinity Nemesis within Commando is okay. Yeah. But the moment you go, oh, by the way, they're also leaving a legacy or, or modern, that's when the problem starts, right? Because you put them with a cheap, efficient. So they're not balanced correctly. They're balanced only in their self contained environment. Right. And, uh, well, I mean, True Name Nemesis, the idea of protection from player is absurd. <laughs> but in a four player match, that's balanced. I, I actually disagree in a four player match because I feel that the same sort of frustration and bad feels of a 1v1 with protection from player, it's it's still present, it's just diluted in the overall perception because of it. Where it's like, well, I can't attack Billy, I can't attack June because he or she has the true name nemesis, and it's like, okay, I guess other, I, I don't like them engineering fun. Let me make Commander fun, just make some good cards. And that's interesting as well, because I think the we're not gonna need protection anymore happened yeah. before true name was printed, right? Like, uh, wasn't that like I, a really I, weird outlier? Yeah. A very weird outlier. But maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe I'm wrong there. Well, that was in the very first set of... Uh, no, it wasn't no, the no, first second, one, second. It was the second, second, second yeah. batch of... of, of or maybe I'm just getting ones. old and I keep thinking things that only happened last year when it was like five years ago or whatever. Like, right, right. So I have one for you, though. And this is one that I actually have gotten into some trouble on Twitter because I was being flippant about it. I know that's very hard to believe for me, being flippant or, 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 or prone to hyperbole uh, or just wearing my heart on my sleeve. But fetch lands. Were fetch lands a mistake, period? Like, like let's start with that question. Were fetch lands a mistake? In some ways, yes, but in other ways, no. That's a very, I know that's a very non good well, answer. Well, thanks there, Vince. <laughs> but no, look, I get that if it never existed, and someone told me, oh, by the way, there's a thing we thought about doing but never did. I'm like, oh, I understand the reason you didn't do it. Right. Shuffling and mana bases being too good. But like the amount of interactions that they have, and the amount of like things they open up to the game in terms of like strategy and all yeah. the formats, I think is well worth the, the downside. But that's coming from someone who loves things like Legacy and Commander and stuff. Well, when they've been in standard, they've been nothing but like a. Well, like but a, a we pain. have we're in a situation with fetch lands where we have been told they will never be reprinted into standard. Period. So everybody's shouting at their computer. But didn't Mark Rosewater once say we'd never have protection? He did, but I, it, 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 well, I can only operate in checkmate, good faith. Brian. <laughs> I can only operate in good faith. Yeah, sure. That that the last time they were in standard, it was more or less universally, anytime you get magic players to agree on something, uh, it was more or less universally believed that they were a huge mistake. They made mana bases too effective. The shuffling was was not just a problem on coverage. In in-store events with all the shuffling, it made it very boring. And it's coverage isn't an just, issue anymore. They got rid of that. Yeah. Alongside protection we and hexproof, they got rid of coverage. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. But perhaps with like Arena and online gaming becoming the, the one of the, the new areas for Magic to be played, surely shuffling isn't much of an issue now, right? But that is, I can only talk about the large and the full game. And and right now, since fetch lands are essentially for, you know, the majority of decks in modern and legacy want to run fetch lands, they're incredibly expensive. And they can't be reprinted in standard. They were reprinted in one out of, I believe, seven so, master so sets. So I'm going to say, yeah. here's, here's my theory. Fetch lands did nothing wrong. Hashtag fetch lands did nothing really? wrong. Really? They just, they died the for the sins of fetchable jewels in standard because they made mana bases so good. Four color decks, just go black, all that nonsense. If you just have fetching basics, and then you have all of your mana fixing in the non-basics, and also don't put check lands in there as well. Don't put in lands that like benefit from fetching those basics. Put in the lands that fe benefit from having fetch lands in hand, like the choked estuaries right. and stuff. Yeah. Then you've got like a balancing act. And therefore your mana bases aren't too good. Sure, shuffling's an issue, but that happens in modern legacy tournaments and people get over that, right? Coverage doesn't exist anymore, so no one cares about that. And it would be a problem for Arena. Mm -hmm. So I think they get a lot of a bad rap in standard for the sins of the lands that accompanied them or went with them. Well, yeah, I mean, having those uh, shock lands in play simultaneously yeah. at one point. And... Yeah, so, they had, so that, that was the first time around. Right. And second time they had the, uh, the, the, the cycle, the bicycle lands, the tango lands from Battle for Zendikar. So I think it was the Battle for Zendikar, like fetchable lands with land subtypes that made the mana bases too good, and therefore people just played four color nonsense. Right. That's what the fetch lands sort of facilitated in standard. If you gave us fetch lands with no fetchable lands other than basics, we'd be in a much better position. Sure, but we would then be in a position, wouldn't you agree, that they need to be constantly reprinted in standard well, to I agree with that. satiate the need for them in basically every other format they're and legal again, in. And again, I think that's the thing that 
So they'd always, do you want fetches always no. legal and standard? I think they need to like be willing to reprint them. Like we, we have this problem with Golden Time right now, right? The cost right. of it, just be willing to reprint these cards. I know there's a thing as reprint equity and they have to drive hype on sets, but they can drive hype with fetch lands. People will buy your Challenger decks and your and your standard event decks or whatever with, with, with fetches in them. Like They don't just, want to reprint them. Why? Because they're worth a lot of money. Exactly. Let them not be worth money for a while. They'll go back up again. They can, they can peaks why would they? Why would they throw that reprint equity away? But at the moment where they reprint them, they're wasting the reprint equity. There's no master set to put them I'm in. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I know, I know you are. I, I, I know you are. I, 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 know I you feel are. like this. This is my feeling on it. This is what got me into trouble. Here's what got me into trouble. If you can't reprint them in standard, okay, and you won't reprint them uh, sufficiently in things like master's products, they were only in one, five out of ten fetch lands. And it was in Which one absurd, master's product. There was, what, six, three modern masters, ultimate masters, Eternal iconic, masters, iconic, eternal, and A25, whatever it is. That's seven master sets that could have been, and we got one. Did you include ultimate in that? That's eight. Uh, ultimate, A25, iconic, three modern, and eternal. Yeah, right. yeah, seven sets. Seven sets. They reprinted five of the ten <laughs> one in seven, eight in one. Yeah. <laughs> See, so, that's so, a so that says that, that says that in a set that's one hundred percent reprints designed for reprinting what modern needs. They weren't willing to do it. They're not going to do. Uh, uh, they explicitly told me. I, I mean, uh, if you can believe. Mark Rosewater, Gavin Verhey. When I did my interview with Gavin Verhey, he explicitly told me, do not expect fetchins to be included in a commander product ever because it's not for commander, it's for modern, so we're not going to put a, a thing that you need in modern into a commander product, which makes a certain amount of sense. But then it comes to me saying, uh, if there's nowhere to reprint these reasonably and, and in large numbers, maybe it'll turn up the other five in another product at some point, but these need to be reprinted healthily they need to be reprinted regularly. They need to meet a big demand. And if they're not willing to do that, and we're getting to the point with $100 fetch lands again, which we are, and again, this is a, a, a bit of hyperbole on my end, and everybody got called for my head. I said, why not just ban the damn things? Yeah, so like, 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 like get rid of them then. then you're not gonna print them, ban them. Whilst I get where you're coming from that, that makes just me, makes me angry. But that makes me angry, because yeah. I'm like, why should we damage the, the strategic choices, and I'm going to mention like what I mean by that in other sets. So, so in like Legacy and Modern, you have effects like Brainstorms and Jaces, where you can put cards right. back on the top of your deck and shuffle them. You've got multiple fetch effects. You can play a Corsa or an Oracle of Moldias to the top of your deck, shuffle away cards. There's loads of intricacies and exciting and interesting things you can do with fetch lands. So why should those intricacies and those interesting strategies die for the sins of a company that can't manage their reprint equity? For a company that 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 has seven reprint-centered sets aimed at modern and legacy you know formats what? and can't even bring <laughs> themselves to put them. They put Tarmogoyf in five of those sets. And, the, and then kill Tarmogoyf for putting <laughs> efficient Tarmogoyf, answers to it. And, and Tarmogoyf is, is, play, is only enough. played in modern in a deck that doesn't see that much Do you know play. what I hope happens, right? That some, randomly, in the next six months to a year, someone has stumbled across this episode and they're watching it. Right. And what's happened is these cards are now in Battle Bond 2. Right. Or they're in Conspiracy 3. And they've crashed the price of them because right. they put this set to demand. Right. And someone's going to comment down below going, I'm watching this now, Vince, you're saying it. Yep. They're not worth anything. Because then fast forward another year, and they haven't printed them again for a year or two. They're already and we'll back see up. Them back up. And you see with old Magic TV episodes in Channel Fireball all the time, yeah. they go, price at the bottom of the screen, like Jason the Mines Corps are seven bucks or whatever. Right, and they're like, right. why did I not buy in then? So I really hope people see this in the future and be like, wow, what, what an emotional roller coaster those prices are. Again, I don't want them to be banned, folks. What I'm saying is, is that if you're not going to reprint them, then you might as well ban them. But the emphasis is, don't ban them, so reprint them. So let's get into some real. Let's get into some real uh, uh, hot topics. These are the, the the big controversial topics of Magic the Gathering. Let's start with net decking. <laughs> okay, so net decking's a weird controversy because there's just people out there who- I don't know that, why it's a, con a controversy. I know, it's bizarre because I, I just see it weird, but net decking for you that don't know at home is this idea that if you go online and find your deck lists online, you're cheating the, the spirit of the game right. and other players. And for some reason, and this has come back with Arena. I think this has died down, and now Arena is here. There are like, you know groups on Facebook and things for Arena where newer players are like, I want to learn this all on my own and like you know explore a video game on your own without a guide. Mm -hmm. It's it's akin to ruining a new RPG by reading the game guide before you've played right. the RPG. But in reality, we're playing in a competitive environment where everyone's trying to outdo other people. You want to know people's tech. You want to know what the pros are playing. Right. Because you're, you're very pro, um, pro, not pro magic, but you're very for the idea of looking online and learning from other people. Yes. And, I'm, I'm very pro-learning. You got me there. Yeah. I'm very pro-learning. So you pro have a channel, learning. don't you, where you right. teach people about 
products and things, right? If I and also the battling of fetch lands and things. Uh, uh, imagine, imagine me saying to you, Vince. Imagine me saying to you, I want to be a doctor, but I don't think that I should just go and read what other doctors have learned and studied over the years. I'm just going to figure it out on my There's own. There's entire movements in the U.S. for that sort of thing. But let's. <laughs> Wrong controversy. <laughs> Wrong controversy. Of course, but you know, I like it's like trying to cook. It's like trying to cook. You know, like, yes. I don't know what oil I need, what temperature it's meant to be. Right. But like, why would you try and cook or medicate yourself or do any of those things without the expertise of actual experts? And net decking does not prevent you from developing new decks. If anything, net decking helps you discover new decks because in learning what works. It's the same thing with your cooking example is that if I know recipes, then I know what tastes good. Mm -hmm. And if I know it tastes good, then I might make my own version of chocolate chip cookies with some changes to it and some, some and, and end up with a brand new cookie altogether. You have to understand how the game works. And the way to do that is to study all available knowledge and information. The idea that you're going to be more true by blocking out information is the height of both hubris and absurdity. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's agree. just, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. You, you're you're, you're saying, I choose to be willfully stupid. There's an inverse as well. You said like right. you learn what things work together, but you learn what other people are doing together. You learn about metagames and what what is the prevalent deck at the moment and allows you to right. adjust your strategy and learn from that and apply that information to understand and, and build your counterintuitive deck, your rogue deck or your, your secret tech that's going to help with those things. Right. So there's even that like the absence of certain elements, you're like, okay, those elements aren't being played right now. I can play with them. But you're right, it is hubris. People believe that they can just walk in and through their own street smarts and their right. own Right. In isolation, in isolation, in complete isolation, be able to do that. And you know what I say? I say, if that's true for you and that's how you want to play this game, you play this game that way, you do it that way, <laughs> but you don't need but to go on an angry not, rant about the fact that I wanted to play the most effective goblins. Yeah, don't make a podcast where you, you know, talk about how you think these things are absurd. <laughs> But also, if that was true, Reed Duke and other pros who have good records would go out to a cave somewhere right. and like pull the rock across and spend weeks meditating on their own to find the best deck list. They do that. Right. They learn from each other. They learn from like online resources and playing the game. Right. So no, as much as you are throwing them a bone saying perhaps you can do that, you can't. Right. It's not possible. <laughs> We, we mentioned we mentioned in the intro this idea of leaked magic cards, and this has been a controversial topic lately. Uh, leaks happen. Even the best companies with the best security and the best practices, which is not Wizards of the Coast necessarily, will have information breaches. And uh, this has occurred. And the question is this. If a leaked card uh, is posted somewhere on the internet, should you, the individual, uh, be allowed to take that card and on places on the internet like Twitter, Reddit, bulletin boards. Uh, do people still know what bulletin boards are? Internet beat age. bulletin boards, showing my age. So you log on MSN with your dial-up modem. So you get on MSN Messenger. Right. Or, no, I'm talking about America Online. You log oh, into America AOL, Online, like, get onto AOL. Dial, dial up, log into... Did they, did they have America Online in, in Britain in they the 90s? Did, they had real bad rep, yeah. Did they, did the they call it UK really Online? Or no, it's called AOL. Call it AOL. AOL. And had the pit, wow. You we, are, we are a stubborn people. Yeah. We're like, no, 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 no. America Online, even though we'll let you log in. And like, yes. Yeah, you can log into your GameSpy forum account or something from like 2001 and talk about magic cards. Right. But, um, yeah, like Seth over on Goldfish gets a lot of stick for this. Right. He, he well, was... I want to talk about content careers. Let's just start with the, the, the basic. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Literally, I'm just on my Facebook. A card has been leaked. And there are a lot of people saying you should not, since that was not officially released, that you are damaging the game and other people's enjoyment of the game by posting to Facebook, oh my gosh, look at Captain, you know, like, like, like... Uh, Captain uh, Midnight. Right, whatever. <laughs> Just Captain, made up for you're right. That's like a DC character. So, so do you do you agree with that statement? Do you do you think that it does damage the integrity of the game? I think that's baloney. Okay. I think I think that it that that once it's out there, it's out there. But have you like War of the Spark period when they're doing the whole like sequential narrative spoiler? It sucks, but I think that, but it doesn't matter. It, it's it's kind of like it's not my fault it got leaked. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm, it's it's it, it's not my fault that it got leaked. It got leaked. The information cannot be unlearned. Sure. And so Pandora's it's also it's also a trading card game. It's also a trading card game, not state secrets. 
And I feel that... Well, when it's trading, there's, there's finance involved as well. Cards will spike. So like when, when so for example, so for, for War of the Spark, I took the stance that I wouldn't on, on stream talk about any card that wasn't officially spoiled. I think that's Mainly fair. Because I'm talking the about the individual. I'm talking yeah. about the individual here. But, so, so, but then people were talking about the cards. And also, people missed out on buying Microsoft Flash because they were trying their hardest to only see the, the spoilers as they were revealed for the story period. Right. So people, I, I joked in a video, I'm not going to say why, but people should look at Microsoft Lattice because there's a card been spoiled. Lo and behold, Microsoft Lattice went for me a $10 card, like a $50 card. Sure. Because of the new card. Well, that's, people that's... missed the boat on that. So there's a responsibility of creators to tell their audiences that these cards are coming. Like just ignoring the fact that they're there because they were leaked instead of spoiled in some ways feels like you're missing out on responsibility. Like you should be yeah. spreading information where information is available. I, I think it's very fair to say this. I think it's very fair for content creators. So so, so, I think that giving a uh, person such as Seth any amount of crap about like the fact that he wants to comment on leaked cards. Uh, I believe his tweet was literally him saying, I can't wait to brew with Name of card. I think it didn't the, even the, say what it no, did. It's the new astral slide. He's yeah. referencing an old version of the card. I mean, I guess that card. conveys a little bit of info. <laughs> but, but, but still, I, it, didn't it was, even it was what the ridiculous card was. the way they, the people yeah. went after him, as though he leaked it or whatever. And it's it's it, and 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 I also feel it's like this elephant in the room thing where everybody yelling at him already knew of the card's existence from independent of him. It's not like they learned of it from him. And 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 it's just like they're just angry at this idea of the hypothetical person <laughs> it's and, like, and, and, and and such. <laughs> Imagine Magic Twitter is a party and right. everyone's there with their, their cocktail and they're chatting. And Seth mentions the large elephant, elephant that's in the room. In the corner. And it's like, and Seth, don't like, do that. Don't, don't talk about that. Don't right. talk about that. Like pointing at the elephant. I think, I think that as a creator, number one, you have the right to make the decision of whether or not you and your content that you create will cover leaks. And you can say, we don't cover leaks. You can say, we do cover leaks. And I think you have 100% that right because no one is forcing anyone to read your content. I think that the proper etiquette if you want to think that creators should subscribe to an etiquette you know like meh uh, but i think that the proper etiquette is that you should at least let people know that it would contain that content so you might say uh, uh war of the spark leaks discussed you know warning leaks yeah, it's like yeah. warning spoilers Spoiler, warning, warning, I, I i i think it's fine for but a place I do to discuss think it's, spoilers I do as think long as you tell people there's spoilers in it it's a weird culture where we're treating the revealing of new cards a day or two early right it's the same as like the ending to a movie right isn't that just bizarre i mean if it is part of a story i get it personally if i think it's, it's ridiculous new, yeah, i think I just, it's, it's 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 and and then you get into the final thing i'll say as a creator is this idea of it was my preview card that got leaked i've had three preview cards leaked uh, you know, I, I, I did just fine. Um, I, I'm okay. So on that topic, I think the, the owner should really be on, and we do this a lot on this ep on this show, but it's on Watsy. And also, like, right. what Watsy do in dealing with the stores that leak them, or the creators that leak them, or wherever the leaks come from, if they, if they can identify it. That's where the owner should be able to focus on improving that. Not on saying to somebody, don't mention the elephant that everyone knows is Right. There. When, when I see these threads, and there are people saying, there's a lot of you know, like like passionate creators that are getting their first preview card. It means a lot to them and all that's fair. Uh, and then the, the feeling of having that ripped away from them with a, a leaked card, don't spread leaks. And it's like, it doesn't matter. As long as it's not you're the person who is doing the leak, if the leak's out there, it's out there and that person's card has already been leaked. Yeah. Whether you mention it or not, their card has been leaked and you are not going to get everyone on the internet to not mention the leak. So it's like, okay, so this has been leaked. It's being talked, it's literally a top post on Reddit. And then Bob says Astral Slide reprint, yeah. you know, or whatever. And then it's Bob like, you just destroyed bestest. Cindy's, you know, like, like preview cards. Like, no, I didn't. It was already destroyed. I'm just, it, it's like, I'm let, I, it, it, it's, it's out of the happened. Box. It's the out cat, of the, the bottle. The cat is out of the bag. And and, and I would just say to creators, like I, I, I had three of my preview cards leaked. Well, the second preview card I ever had was leaked. And you know what? I still got very good views on those videos and, and it stinks. I turned one of those videos into a joke about the fact that it had been leaked. Uh, yeah, uh, it sucks, uh, but again, you know, the, the owner should be on how they're being leaked what we can do as communities. Like we should we promote a culture where shops aren't taking pictures of cards and put them on Reddit. Yeah. That's 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 where the focus should be on changing that culture, not on telling off these like Bob from MTG 
st- I'm trying to make up a fictional MTG Except channel. from MTG Gold. Yeah, no, I know, like, I know it is, but I really want to... Is, by the way, <laughs> the nicest bloody individual there is. The most We've already sincere, mentioned him, but I want to make up a fictional... He's the most wonderful, kind person, and the idea that you're going to throw a rock at his sure. head over this stuff is just outrageous. What I was outrageous. trying to do was come up with a fictional uh, Mad the Gathering channel ah, in my head. Screw that. But no, the reason... Like, no, 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 listen, listen, not to hide, not to hide Seth. The reason I wanted to do it was for a bit of a joke where we can make up oh, okay. a, a parody sounding name. Uh-huh. But I couldn't think of one where it wouldn't be accidentally another channel anyway. So right. <laughs> I didn't want to like yeah. throw shade There's at enough someone. If, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> like, MTG, what work kind of something? Strategy. No, I think that's oh, one. That's one. It's, it's, that's it's one. tough. It's that's tough. one. Tough. That's one. That's one. So we've been in agreement on a lot of these, I think. Uh, but this next one, I do believe we disagree on. So we can actually get some good discussion. Planeswalkers as commanders. Yes. Uh, this really caused a lot of heat mm-hmm. and and yelling on the internet. Dull surprise. Should planeswalkers be allowed as commanders? Hundred percent. Hundred. Hundred. Not a not a sliver, pun intended, of doubt in your mind. Well, there's no sliver of a planeswalker as much as people really want one. Right. Um, right. But hundred and ten. Hundred and ten. Like, why? Why would you not want to give players more options to play in commander? I think there's most a lot of, them, of reasons. Most of them terrible too. Most of those reasons. Most of those players are awful. Like, they wouldn't even be any good. But it gives players the option to play their. Well, pet because that's not commander. Deck. Why isn't it? Because Commander is a legendary creature, and a Planeswalker isn't even a creature, let alone no, a legendary it, creature. No, it is legendary now, Brian. But it's not a creature. No. So, that's the thing. <laughs> but no, but sure. So, But wh- why Why would you not expand that space? Why are you so adamant to stick to this old rule be- of creature? Because, why is that? Because restrictions, restrictions breed uh, creativity and form. And that is the form of the format. And by removing those, it's the same thing as though you were to say uh, uh, the hybrid mana in uh, 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 Commander Color okay. Identity, and 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 to say, well, what if what if uh, well, why should I only have to have the same colors? Aren't you removing? If why can't I run red in my Tesa deck? Okay, I'm going to extrapolate back the other way. Yeah. Why are we allowing any creatures that aren't Elder Dragons? Because those breed real restrictions. That's a real restriction. That's a real like hardcore. Structure. I actually think that I think that actually, if you've never played original Elder Dragon, Highlander, you're going to say you'd like it to be the Elder Dragon. You're now. missing out. It's fun. Exactly, it's a so lot I'm, of fun. So you're trying to tell me that I'm somehow breaking down the, the rules of color identity, which is no, not no, what no, I'm saying. No, I'm not talking about breaking the rules. I'm talking about that there's uh, uh, that there that there are restrictions to make the format a format, and those restrictions include things like the color identity sure. uh, thing, and and that. Yes, it's a legendary creature. Yes, once the game was just the original five Elder Dragons, and yes, there were updates to it, but it was updates in the sense of we went from just these five legendary creatures in the very early stages of the game to any legendary creature. A planeswalker is not even a creature. It does not operate like a creature. No, sure, mechanically, it's it's quite different. It is. It is. So so. Uh, you, you know, why can't I have an enchantment as my commander in instant? I mean, I wouldn't be too... I mean, as long as it's legendary, I wouldn't really care. Really? So how many, we have legendary uh, sorceries. sorceries. We do. So, so why can't I have Urza's Ruinous Blast as a commander? If you if you sat down and said to me, um, by the way, guys, I've got a bit of a homebrew here. Yeah. My commander is Urza's Ruinous Blast. I'm like, well, it's a Wrath, but that's not different to Char of Alara, really. So yeah, go on then. Okay, so, so, so if you sat down with me and you said, so I have uh, a commander deck and... Uh, Karn Liberated is uh, my commander, uh, I would say, all right, go on then, no yeah. problem. Yeah. What I'm talking about is for the actual written rules of commander though, that you don't, those don't need to change to allow playgroups to allow Planeswalkers as commander, and that this is what gives sure. us their guidelines. They're the guidelines that help establish what the format is, and then if I wanna say, well, let's play with uncards, you know, and silver border cards, I don't need an official ruling for that. It just means my playgroup's okay. And if my playgroup's okay with Planeswalkers, my oh, playgroup's play. okay with Planeswalkers. So were you quite against it? When, so again, this is yeah. hypothetical. So they allowed uncards for like a month, wasn't it? I didn't think they needed just to do to that. Just to sell packs or whatever? I don't um, think they needed to so do that. So you were against I think, that? I, I'm fine with that. If, if, if you sit down with an uncard with me and you say, do you mind? I would say I do not mind. I don't think I need the rules committee on that. What I need the rules committee to do is to say, Leovold is a commander that if somebody is playing with this, it is inherently broken in the format to such an extreme degree that we are going to universally advise 
commander players that this is not a card to be played within the format. Now, you can still sit down in my play group and say, I have a Leovold sure, deck. I sure. promise you it isn't that bad. I really want to play and with I, that. And I agree with you. Like, uh, play so, group should so be able to it's, self-moderate. It's, it's a guiding principle of the format. What, and the guiding principle of the format is that planeswalkers are not commanders. So, but, but besides it not being a creature, which again, I'm still not quite convinced by that argument. It's okay. A what are the other reasons not to have planeswalkers be the de facto option? It operates fundamentally different than a creature does. Sure. I cannot attack with it. Uh, 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 but it can be attacked. But it can be attacked. A balancing. So it's 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 issues in terms of balance. In addition to that, uh, they are are not designed with things like commander in terms of... of I don't of, think most... Well, actually, only in recent years have legendary creatures started to be true. designed with commander in mind. Like, right. Captain Sisso was never designed to be a commander, right? I, I suppose that's fair. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, again, it all comes down to... I, I, I feel where you say 110%, I feel 70%. I, 7% against. 70% against. Yeah. Uh, uh, I feel, look at me imitating your voice. Did you what? catch that? I said, <laughs> I said 70% 70, 70 against. That's, that's an American accent you just did. That's not, that's not imitating against. my voice. Against. 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 Are you, you against You say it? against. Okay. Against. So yeah, how, how, I get what you mean. Like I, I don't think it's so. What I'm saying is, is I don't think it's a disaster, and and I understand people care passionately about it, and uh, that's great. Uh, but I don't. I just feel that there needs to be rules. Like I feel like like let me Does ask you a question. Does nobody care about the rules? Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, uh, what about you know me playing with uh, a commander deck with a sideboard and using wish cards? What I think about, that's great. Oh yeah, go for it. Okay, so everything's fine. What about me? Uh, I, I, Not everything's fine. That is a huge leap from what I just said. Uh, I think wishes should be playable. Why? Why, why should cards be banned at all in Commander? Because some cards lead to unfun games with people. So I don't think wishing into a wish board makes anyone go. Oh, I wish that wasn't happening. Get but it. is that that that's true with every Leovold deck? I cannot play with Leovold in any capacity. Yeah, because no. Leovold is pretty obnoxious. Primeval Titan is banned for a very good reason because the games revolve around mm -hmm. Primeval Titan. Same with Emrakul. People want to bribery Emrakul and steal right. Emrakuls and stuff. Right. I get that. Clone Emrakuls because the cloning rule yeah. was changed. I wish they didn't change the clone rule, but let's not get into that, right? But I genuinely believe wish cards should be playable. It bugs me that they can't be played online. In paper, I can obviously talk to people about it. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely believe that allowing commanders doesn't hurt anything. I don't. I really think the majority of people wouldn't use them because they're just not any good. The majority, some are a bit too good. There should be some that might be banned. People are very scared of um, Sorin Markov for Tony Amos Life Tales the Ten. So some might need to be changed. And things like Doubling Season probably get a lot better, and Chain Veil get a lot better. But that's the same. That's going to happen when you yeah. have anything like that. So I, I don't I, think it pushes the power level any far, further either. The, the counterpoint that we said in another episode is that now Oathbreaker exists, I don't feel the... You can scratch that itch elsewhere, I guess. Right. But, um, yeah, I'm actually really for just letting Commander be, a, even just a legendary card. Although you've got... What's the worst that could happen? A Jitte as a Commander? That... That... Woof, that gets me going, yeah. Lightning G Bolt yeah. Commander. No, 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 because that's not legendary. That's not... But it was always, to be legendary. It was always Jitte, Jitte in the Command okay. Zone, just playing one yeah. ones with haste sure. and gripping Jitte's. Sure. Oh, they have to be colourless, though. See? Balances itself. Right. Even well, what about What about a creature commander. that isn't legendary? What if I wanted Stoneforge Mystic as my commander? Could That's I not do? legendary. Right, so why, why, why can't I have Stoneforge Mystic as my commander? Because it's not a a, a legendary leader of a But I want to build a deck around Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, 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 if you're saying... It, it, but you're well, just removing all rules simply because I think... Well, not all the rules. I'm say, you're saying you I want to do a Planeswalker. I'm saying why can't I just do creatures? Because it's not Lord a of Atlantis. Creature. I'd love a Lord of Atlantis as my. To be honest, if you came to my playgroup and said you want to do that, I'd be more than happy for you to do it. But that's how I feel with the Planeswalkers. But why shouldn't it just commander because, say pick but, any card? But, as but your, Planeswalkers your... make a lot more sense than Lord of Atlantis, right? I, well, would how you, does would you see that point? How does a Planeswalker make more sense than Stoneforge Mystic? Because it's a legendary card. As of a year it's ago. It's a named character. Stoneforge Mystic. It's, no, it's no, not, Brian. It's no, it's not. Here. So will you concede the point that a legendary Planeswalker card? Makes more sense as a commander than Lord of Atlantis or Stoneforge Mistake. No, the that? Lord of Atlantis. In he which case, quotes. I guess we very much there disagree. Are actually, every single... quotes on flavor text attributed to the Lord of Atlantis. But what if there's multiple Atlantises on Dom Dominaria? I can't believe there's even one Atlantis. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't understand how that works. But there's Arabia too. But yeah, I, I... I'm sorry, Arabia. Is that what it's called? I believe they call it Ra yeah, the, I, the I think, Ra yeah, Arabia. I, I, I no, no, think... no, no. It's not Arabia. It's Arabia. I think and on another day, on another discussion, funny. you might agree with me that actually having Planeswalkers makes more sense than Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, well, I don't want either of them, but I also don't. <laughs> no one wants Stoneforge Mystic. I don't. I don't want. I don't want either of them, but I don't care as passionately about it as you. It's just that if you asked me, 
I say no. Let's leave it. Let's 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 leave it. We've got. I like structure. I like sure. sensible restrictions. I think Commander's really good. My biggest frustration with that whole thing, without going too much into it, is that I got accused of not knowing anything about the format for daring to believe that Commanders would be fine. That was right. one of my. I got told by multiple people like, you know, "Oh, you obviously know nothing about Commander." I was like, "Woof." That's, those are some strong words. I bet someone's typed Every, that in the comment section. Right. I've now said that like, everyone's oh, going to be on your side on that, that one. Everyone wants. I don't think so. Yeah, I think there's no. a passionate group yeah. of people that do not want it. Yeah. There you go. That's why it's controversial. That's why it's controversial. What's our next controversial topic? So I don't know how controversial this is, but I do know some people feel very strongly on either side of us. I guess that's right. the definition. That, that's of what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, stream sniping. Stream sniping. Have you sniping. ever been a victim of stream sniping? I've probably yes, I actually I know for a fact I have been a victim of stream sniping. So did you feel like it, you deserved it because you were playing in a public forum, or do you think that maybe it's a little bit against? How, how do you feel on the idea of? Should why don't we, should you we start my it? opinion? Say. Why don't we start with your opinion on it? Because mine, as usual, with the professor is kind of weird okay so for those that don't know stream sniping is the idea that you go and watch you're playing a game of magic and you notice your opponent on arena or magic the gathering online is a prominent name let's say you find their twitch channel see them online you watch their twitch channel to see their hand for example right so it gives you information that you shouldn't normally have and uh so i believe that you just shouldn't do it these people are like making content and trying to entertain and inform people so it feels a little bit harsh to abuse that the counterpoint that some people make, and I had made against me last week or the week before when it happened to me, when I said, oh, I wish they weren't doing that, was that I, I get help from Twitch chat. My argument is that Twitch chat is 99% of the time very unhelpful. Twitch chat does not have your best, like your opponent, does not have your best intentions at heart. Okay, so I think trying to play Magic and talk to a Twitch channel is actually very difficult and it also makes you play a lot worse. So that's my counter argument for that. But I think that if you are enjoying content like this, I think perhaps you should throw that content and create a bone and not just like look at their hand. Because that just feels very unsportsmanlike. That's how I perceive it. On Magic Online, is your Magic Online handle Pleasant Kenobi? Yeah. Well, then you don't have to worry. No one will ever know that they're up against a content creator. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Pleasant Kenobi. Make sure you give me a follow. I stream every single Monday night at 7 p.m. BST during British summertime and GMT during the winter. Mm -hmm. Everything you just said is valid. Everything you just said is valid. If anything, I almost feel like like everything you just said doesn't go far enough. Like I okay. feel like it's fair to say stream sniping is a form of cheating. Okay. Even though the information is like a lot of people say, well, it's like what if my opponent is playing with his hand with his cards like this, showing them to me, and that if your opponent choosing... was doing that yeah. at a comp event, a comp, comp's a bit weird because like you know like. They should know better, right? But if your opponent You was, are actively looking at your opponent's yeah, if, name, if seeing you, its LSV, and then going into the But to my question, if they, they yeah. had, if they were not this and didn't know, would you not tell them? Right. Ah. But they do know because they're choosing to stream. Sure, sure. But I'm just saying, like, at the, that yeah. argument would you not tell that them? is just not fair. Well, well, what if, what me, if they've, I, got I, a pair of, they've got a pair of glasses and the reflection on this, like... like I've, I've done that. I was very yeah. hungover at GP, yeah. and I was yeah, wearing yeah. sunglasses inside, yeah. like in Utrecht, I think it was. Yeah. And my opponent went up, I can see your hand in your sunglasses, and I was like, I'm so sorry. Right. Well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, but I, I think it's... I, I think that stream sniping is cheating. I, I feel it's flat-out cheating. Uh, my opinion on it, though, is very weird. My opinion is I could not care less. Now, mm -hmm. part of this is that I'm not a prolific streamer. I, I do stream. Uh, <laughs> go check out my stream. I have been streaming a lot more lately, but I... You, have a, you, you make content? I, I do make content. I thought we were just yeah. making these for like, our own benefit. Yeah, no, we're just sitting... I thought we were just sitting in my basement with cameras and in lights the, around the content me dungeon chatting says. in the content dungeon. Um, I, I don't care. I think it's so pathetic an act that I have no ability to be upset over it, that the idea that someone is, and I'm gonna sound a little harsh here, but I'm sorry, the idea that someone is such a loser is so pathetic, a, a worm of an entity, that they need to cheat at Magic the Gathering on a game that's for like a tick, <laughs> one ticks or whatever. But it's not even just cheating that. Like, I believe you're cheating the people watching that streamer out of a no, I'm just talking moment. about no, like that. Think, think about that it. They like, want to win that game. Sure, sure, but you, you, you're, I, you're. I feel like like. Well, sure, there you go. So, buddy. so they're, they're watching the streamer, right? And they want to watch a good game of modern. So this is, here's an example of what happened to me. I've right. got a hand with three mesmeric orbs in my hand. It's a, it's not a fact that Mill plays, and my opponent plays a meddling mage, and there's a pause. It's like a 15 second pause, but obviously the delay for the stream. And my opponent then names mesmeric orb, and I say quite innocently, "Well, that's a pretty good name." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and the most chat are like, this is, and then they notice he's in the stream and it happened. But the point is, my chat then, which was like 150 people, were all like, they're not watching any modern anymore, are they? It becomes about the fact that the guy's watching my, my hand. It's not, I'm not going to win that match now. And that whole game is just ruined for not only me, 
but the people trying to enjoy getting involved with it as well. Right. So not only are you cheating yourself, you're cheating your opponent out yes. of tickets, but you're cheating a load of people who've spent the time invested in some entertainment. I agree so I on all those really points, cheap. but I, I still can't bring myself to care because it's such a pathetic act. It's so pathetic. It's so, it's like, okay, uh, uh, did you watch any Harry Potter? What's that? Sorry, no, of course. It's just like, it's I just like. I am Harry Potter. This is, this is Harry Potter after is, the. Oh boy, you have aged, you've aged terribly. <laughs> Whoa, I'm you've 21. You've aged terribly. <laughs> it's just so like. in Harry it's, Potter, it's, what it's, happens? In Harry Potter, they had that one character, Wormtail. And he's just like, the, the, the this Does he take the ring to Mordor? Or does he? Lose the, the, the pathetic, it's just, it's such this like sad. Sure. But, sad act of, okay. of, of, of evil. But at the it's same time, you wouldn't let like, him off, would you? You wouldn't let him I off wouldn't when let he's him off, manipulating I, that king. But like, so I've been playing, but basically I'm streaming and I'm playing and people say this person's sniping you. And I go, oh, that's just sad. I, I just like, I, I go, oh, that's, that's really sad. I feel bad for them. I just yeah. really feel bad for this person's life. But I think when meddling mage is involved, it becomes a point where you can't even play a game of magic anymore because they're yes. perfect information. Yeah. So I, I get what you mean, but I do think people should just... But again, you can say in the comment section below whether you guys believe that the argument that you're a streamer, therefore it's one of the risks of the occupation, whether that's fair or not. Nah, that's, it's, that's, it's, it's terrible behavior to do. I, I agree, yeah. but I'm interested to see what the comments are. One of the risks, it's they like... They might hammer like, us now. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, what's our next controversy, sir? The next one is the biggest one. This is the biggest controversial hot topic, I believe, in all of Magic the Gathering, the reserve list. <sighs> is there an argument to be made for keeping the reserve I think list? there is an argument to be made for it. Is it a reasonable it. argument? So we talk about, uh, so I used to teach, uh, one of the classes I taught was critical thought and argument. And uh, essentially you get into the modes of persuasion and debate. And within the context of the class, we would only be working with uh, uh, issues that were two-sided issues. So for example, uh, when choosing a topic, you I would not allow you in my classroom to make a speech against child abuse because the argument is is that there is no reasonable opposition sure. a re there's no there's nobody who's going to say well actually i uh, there's a lot of reasons why we should uh uh like like physically and sexually abuse children like no there that is not there is no reasonable opposition to child abuse uh, you you know you could maybe make an argument that we deserve stricter child abuse laws sure, in the sure. state. So, so uh, 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 where someone could say no, there there are plenty. So, so in that case, um, then yeah. So with the reserve list, what I want to know because I know I, I feel the majority majority of players overwhelmingly would like the reserve list gone. Yeah. I want to know reasonable opposition arguments about keeping the reserve list so they are. the way i describe it yes is and i by the way i i generally believe once you get down to brass tacks i should think the reserve gone. should be gone, gone. okay gone. however i do appreciate that it kind of provides a gold standard for collections mm -hmm. like the, the the mtg economy as much as you probably people will say they hate mtg finance but they're kind of annoyed when they open a pack of magic cards and their rare isn't worth 10 bucks right right people get annoyed by that so the fact that cards are worth so much is because we have things like Wizards supposedly taking into account reprint equity and not reprinting things like mad, and that accounts for old cards too. Right. The reason that shops can hold on to Power 9 and original jewels and feel safe in doing so is because they know they're not getting reprinted, right? right. So it creates a gold standard, a, 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 a amount that those cards are going to be worth, if not more, that will never change or go down at least. But at the same time, it causes far... It's kind of like you said earlier about Fetchlands, where I get there's issues with them. Right. But the positive would be so much higher. Right. Imagine a legacy in Vintage where like anyone can play it. Canadian Highlander, and you just get your power if well, you want well, it. Well, maybe like, I think cards Utopia. need to have value. Sure. But, but so, so maybe it, Legacy is still, like, even if they released Vintage Masters in paper, that, that doesn't mean that Tropical Islands are going to be less than, you know, $50 each, and some people still can't afford that yeah. or whatever, and that that's fine. But can you imagine a world where Tropical Islands were less than a Skull tongue because they can't right. manage the reprints properly right. and that would happen that would as well. That would be hilarious too. <laughs> but I, I, I think the other argument I'd make just, just to try and offer reasonable oppositions is I would say that by having the reserve list you ensure that there is a kind of myth or legacy, pun intended, about Magic the Gathering where we look at these cards and we say that the Black Lotus is worth this many thousands of dollars, the moxes are worth this many thousands of dollars, and it creates this idea that, much like the idea of organized play, where it's like you too can make it to the Pro Tour, which we once had, but this idea that you too might open a pack where those cards might one day be as worth, and they won't, 
but it just creates this mystique and allure yeah. that that cards will have and retain value and it's enforced and 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 that that's kind of good for the idea of the sure, game sure but when we get to the counterpoints where Scolden Tarn's not on the reserve list, right? Right. And people crack those cards back when Zendikar first released, and those cards are now worth... And here's another one I've got pop. for you. Uh, Birds of Paradise is an alpha mm -hmm. card. It has been reprinted 5,000 times. Have you seen... And, and the yeah, alpha Birds of Paradise is still worth a fortune. Have you seen Savannah Lions, a card that sees no play outside of old school? Right. No play outside of old school. Alpha and Beta Savannah Lions now hundreds of dollars. Sure. Because uh, people a dragon. A, a Beta Sheevan Dragon is, is a fortune. And that, not because this, and then, as you've done again, there's no play outside of old school. Right. None. Right. So these cards still hold value in their old borders. Yeah. You still open cards that are worth surgical extractions and Liliana of the Veils that are worth money in new packs. Okay, well, so why let's, do we let's make this. Yeah, so so obviously Vince and I both think it should go away. Most players, I want to offer something then for the card. I should have just disagreed uh, adamantly yeah. for the now, I want to do a slightly different conversation than on this. How about this? How about this? Uh, they used to update the reserve list. Mm-hmm. Well, They've already so done it. Don't forget, Demonic Tutor is was on the reserve list. Right. They did a alternate art printing into the um, Divine Demonic book. Um, no, they updated thing, the reserve they? list and then took it off because of that. Right. And now we've got we printed not the masters. Yeah. So why couldn't they do that again? So, so, so what if they shit. said? What if they said with the reserve list, we are going to keep you know we are going to keep Moxes on the reserve list, but we are going to update it so that original dual lands are off of it. And the thing is, people will rejoice. Because yeah. no one's looking for people to reprint power. Right. That's not. I said. I said. Can I hold on to vintage? Yeah. That's not really what people are looking for, right? People are looking for the, the dual lands for the ADH and one. a play legacy right, because it's right, way right. more accessible than. Uh, also, there's a lot of absurd things on the reserve list in terms of like. I mean, the original Baron Sengir is on the reserve yeah. list. That makes zero sense. There's a lot of bizarre cards on there. I guess the problem with the updated reserve list is that eventually you just want everything off of it. You, you, you just, you do one. Then then the but conversation is the Moxes. Then the conversation is the Moxes. Then the conversation is Black Lotus. Why don't you reprint that? It, 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 even in trying to offer up a discussion about this, all we want is we want the stuff to be printable. Yeah. We, we would like it to be done reasonably so. so and we haven't even touched on this whole potential legal, not legal thing. Because that's another controversy, isn't it? I, I, I think Some people, Yeah, exactly. Some people believe it's complete nonsense. Well, Wizards still uphold that that is the case. So. Wizards is going to get sued by, you know, uh, the MTG reserve Finance list police. Barons. The MTG yeah, the MTG yeah, the the Finance They wear Illuminati. top hats and, and monocles and have cigarette holders. Except even in MTG Finance, most members, as far as I know, are for removing the reserve list because then they'd get to buy and sell through Vintage Masters and they'd be able to, to cheat us. I'm sorry, profit. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 they'd make be able money to hand over fist. Make money hand over fist. That's a polite way of buying up all the things from Vintage Masters and then selling it at uh, a higher price. Do you know what also happened? Right. If, if it was going to happen, there'd be a leak. And they'd know before we did. Oh, right. They'd know before <laughs> and we did. And if, you, and, and, if you spend, and if you spend seventy nine ninety nine, you'll get access to that uh, information. Oh, this is going to get some. You get some angry tweets for this episode, boys. Oh, screw it. I'm so <laughs> sick of it. Hashtag MTG Finance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we, we both agree. We, neither of us care about the legal argument. We just want magic to prosper. And I think one of the ways to do it is to allow people to play with all the cards. But it's probably just never going to happen. Right. And that's where the controversy lies, right? Like, the majority of the player base is just like, come on. It's it's never going to happen, and it sucks. And I, I feel like it's, it's out of all the controversies that we've talked about, it's 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 the deadest of horses. And an attached controversy is, should we stop talking about the reserve list in videos and things? Because it comes up every couple of months, right? right? Everyone talks about the reserve list every few months. Controversy, same... should we stop talking about controversy? Should yeah, just, yeah. Do, do Magic players, here's our actually our true final one. Do Magic players uh, 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 just live Oof, for controversy? Complain too much. Same thing, right? I don't think so. we do. I... I don't think we do. So the old axiom that people say is that axiom, axiom, axiom? Well, you tell me, Englishman. Axiom. Whatever. They say that we would complain at how five, our ten, $100 bill is folded into our envelopes. You know, someone reasons. tagged the originator of that phrase uh, when I made a comment about it, and uh, I'm forgetting their name right now, but they, they, the, the originator of that phrase is known, and the originator even said, I don't like how the phrase is used today. Oh, really? Yeah, the originator said that isn't about stuff like uh, uh, where we were complaining about like uh, uh, the rising prices in Ultimate Masters, I believe. Yeah, and people yeah, were like, yeah. oh, well, I guess it's true. You could fold it in. I'm like, no, we're talking about stuff like the, the, the damaged box toppers, the fact yeah, that it's more yeah. expensive at local game stores Cost than at Target or Walmart, yet. you know, and stuff like this. It's like, I feel that, that Magic players complain too much is used as a way to shut down criticism, and I think criticism is valid. Can people get worked up over nothing? Sure. Can people get uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, emotional, sure, but that doesn't invalidate that there are, are reasons and, yeah. quite frankly, the right, especially as a consumer, to voice what is is you see especially is going a wrong. Especially a luxury hobby as well, because yeah. magic is a luxury hobby. Right? Yeah. The, the cards hold value, even the non-reserve list, non-eternal staple stuff, when you're cracking a £3.50 pack of cards, $3.50, $4 nowadays, uh, that has 15 cards in it, that's, that is a premium hobby compared to almost any hobby, really. Right. It's, it's up there with like, a standard decks up there with a pack of golf clubs. So I think we do have a right to have some sort of say, especially us two sat here in our like leather chairs moaning about well, what's you doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are full full of whiskey, by the way. We're sipping whiskey. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, and after now. the cameras turn off, we just light our cigars right, with burning right, lotuses. Right, and just right. Like... burning burning original dual lands <laughs> to light our cigars. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think yeah, playing a luxury hobby like Magic, even on the even on the standard end of things, where cards are still ludicrously expensive compared to other hobbies. Right. I think we do have a right to say card stock should be better, or please stop putting the price up on packs when there's no change to the production value. Like, I think that's, they're valid criticism, and you're right. So was that what they said on Twitter? Did they reply and say, I think... Well, well someone, I, I, I went off, I made a tweet that I was... You went off on Twitter? That's unusual. I made a tweet that I was frustrated with people throwing up that saying at me sure, sure. whenever I criticized things like the cost of magic. Mm -hmm. And then somebody did, I believe it's called snitch tagging, and they were like, that's at this person's uh, uh, quote. And then uh, that person uh, uh, actually replied, actually, yeah, that is my quote. And 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 uh, uh, I don't think there's someone who typically agrees with me, but they they, they, they said, I actually uh, agree with the professor here. It, like, that, like it should not be used to shut down criticism. It was meant for a very specific climate and a very specific instance uh, in ye old days where, where there was a, a problem that he felt was a manufactured, you know, problem yeah. that was like, this is, this is silly. And that that's not relevant to things like, like problems with, you know, pricing and distribution and, sure, and, sure, and, and, sure. and issues that I was raising about this is cheaper at Target and Walmart than a local game store, or this is a product that is not yeah. being offered at a local game store. And I'm trying to defend the LGS oh, here. That's fantastic. Yeah. I don't know about that. That's All wicked. Right. What do you think are the biggest controversial topics in Magic the Gathering? What is, is it Brian's socks, for example? My my socks. Like, sock, it to, sock it to me in the comments it's below. Really normal socks. Yeah, normal socks. How can you live with normal socks? I don't know. I, 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 my life is so exciting. I have to downplay parts of it, and socks is right, one of them. Right, right. Let us know in the comments below, Vince, if they want to find you. Where can they find you? Twitch.tv forward slash Pleasant Kenobi for my streams, or more importantly, YouTube.com forward slash Pleasant You have Kenobi. a YouTube channel? Do, it's where the magic happens. YouTube.com forward slash Pleasant Kenobi. Link should be in the description below if Brian isn't there. Lazy. <laughs>